Hey everyone, welcome to the It's a Material World channel. I'm Puneeth, and honestly, I can't count the number of times people have asked me, so what do you do exactly as an MSc? Or what jobs can material science and engineering students successfully apply for? It's a complex question, really. And in this video, I wanted to highlight the versatility of the field by listing several different roles that I've seen my peers successfully enter with an MSc background. I'll list 10 different roles in this video, but keep in mind that MSc students can enter many more. These are just some of the few that I've seen over the past few years. I'll also list average salaries, which I found on Payscale, but keep in mind that salaries can vary significantly depending on the industry and the company that you work for. Also, if you're interested in learning strategies to receive offers in any of the roles we discussed today and more, check the link in the description and stick around to hear more about the MSc Career Development course that we created, which includes testimonials, resumes, cover letters, and even access to a community of young professional mentors in a variety of roles and industries. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So number one, probably most obvious, materials engineer with an average salary of $77,907 per year. So what a materials engineer does specifically depends heavily on the industry and the application, but essentially materials engineers develop, test, and process materials to fit a specific need for a product such as medical devices or soda cans or jet engines or microchips. This usually involves altering and experimenting with materials such as metals, ceramics, and polymers to get a desired property and performance for a very niche application. That's where the MSc tetrahedron comes into play. You have to know how the structure, the processing, the characterization, and the properties all are interconnected to ultimately get that desired performance. So number two, process engineers. With an average annual salary of $74,471 according to Payscale, process engineers develop and optimize industrial processes, for instance, involving semiconductors or jet engines. They ensure that raw materials are transformed into the final product as efficiently as possible so they can do that by monitoring and improving the equipment and the methods associated with this process. Honestly, a large part of the MSc curriculum involves learning about how materials are processed and how various parameters affect the structure and the properties of the material. So you can leverage this knowledge and include these relevant courses and keywords in your resume if you're applying to a process engineer role. So number three is manufacturing engineers with an average annual salary of $71,052. Process engineering and manufacturing engineering are very similar and sometimes used interchangeably, but manufacturing engineers study and improve manufacturing methods and tend to have more training in supply chain management and operations. Manufacturing engineers find solutions to production issues, and they can use computer-aided design or CAD software to create systems to aid in manufacturing. As such, I highly recommend learning CAD, taking a course, or you know, learning SolidWorks or AutoCAD on your own through a platform like LinkedIn Learning, because you can use this combined with your knowledge of materials processing to differentiate yourself from other candidates. Before we get into number four, I want to tell you guys about our MSc Career Development online course, which includes all the resources I wish I had just entering college or throughout my time as an MSc student seeking internship and full-time opportunities. We brought together 14 young MSc professionals from a variety of schools and industries to share an overview of their role in their company, relevant MSc principles and concepts, and actionable strategies to land an interview in that specific industry, including networking, resume, and interview tips. These mentors have experiences in many different companies, including SpaceX, Tesla, Nike, 
Boston Scientific, NASA, Gore, P&G, Applied Materials, and more. We're also including their resumes and cover letters, as well as templates of our own to show you a blueprint for success if you want to follow that path. Since networking is as important as ever, we would also love for you to join our membership community and get instant access to Q&A with these mentors, receive resume feedback and weekly group coaching alongside many more career development resources. For more info, just visit the link in the description. All right, back to number four, which is R&D engineer or product development engineer, both very similar roles with an average salary of about $75,000. R&D engineers conceptualize, design, and test new products, or they develop experiments to iteratively improve existing products. As a materials engineer, you can leverage that materials-based background to provide a unique perspective to improve an existing product or design a new one altogether. So number five is quality engineers with an average annual salary of $71,364. Quality engineers design tests to verify that a product meets the performance and safety standards and functions as intended. So when an issue arises, quality engineers problem solve, investigate root causes, and implement corrective or preventative action plans. So when these issues are materials related, that's when your MSE background can come in really handy. But in general, your engineering background will equip you with the tools needed to solve problems and identify root causes. All right, so number six is research scientists with an average annual salary of $81,855. So if you're looking for a more research focused role, research scientists plan and conduct lab based experiments and analyze the resulting data. They then write reports and present their findings to identify a potential path forward in a groundbreaking field. MSE is unique because by definition, the major focus is on both science and engineering. So I've seen many MSEs pursue this path as a means to create innovations for the future. Number seven is packaging engineers with an average annual salary of $71,053. Packaging engineers keep in mind both form and function when designing packages, which make MSEs a unique fit because you can do a cost of benefit analysis of various packaging materials, you can develop existing materials to perform better, or you can identify alternatives that may be more durable, higher quality, or more sustainable. And number eight is a non-traditional pathway, which is entrepreneurship or becoming CEO. So the average salary for a CEO is $155,000, but just keep in mind that with entrepreneurship, you may have zero salary or little salary in those first few years until your business really starts to take off. Since materials are literally everywhere, there is massive potential to find your niche and develop a product that is particularly useful in that area. Your MSE background can help you become a better entrepreneur because you'll develop an inherently analytical mindset, an ability to solve different problems, and you'll have a diverse knowledge base of a class of materials and its industries. All right, so number nine is becoming a consultant. So management consultants on average make $88,000 per year, whereas engineering consultants on average make $74,000 per year. So management consultants implement problem-solving techniques and business knowledge to provide key business solutions for a variety of clients. And engineering consultants provide engineering advice and technical solutions for their customer projects. Since MSC is lesser known than mechanical engineering or chemical engineering, you can really differentiate yourself since more than likely materials are involved in some fashion or another with your client's business. So finally, number 10, systems engineer, with an average annual salary of $80,445. So this role typically involves overseeing all aspects of a project or an infrastructure, identifying challenges or room for improvements, and brainstorming and implementing the best solution moving forward. 
So while this role isn't specific to MSCs, this just goes to show that material science and engineering students can succeed in a number of different roles and companies. So that concludes our list of 10 jobs material scientists and engineers can pursue, as well as their corresponding salaries. Again, by no means is this an exhaustive list. We just ultimately wanted to show you that MSCs can do absolutely anything in any industry. And just a reminder, to learn the most effective job search strategies and network with professionals in these roles and industries, visit www.mseacademy.com or click the link in the description. We'll see you soon, and in the meantime, go change the world.